said AMBIDIA's 5090 is set to be a serious power haul. Lunar Lake is here. AMBIDIA's releasing a new one and the Ryzen 9800X3D. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mode. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 5090 is shaping up to be a serious power hog. This story originally comes from Tweaktown and starting things off, as you can see, first up they say that according to rumors and information from several sources, NVIDIA is planning to launch their next gen RTX 50 series with the new 5090 and 5080 early next year. And of course, if you follow this channel, you likely already know that, but then they go on to talk about the fact that they recently did a tour of MSI's new factory in Shenzhen, China. And while they were there, they got a chance to look at some of MSI's new PSUs. And as you can see right here, they actually state that these new PSUs feature two 12V 2x6 power connectors, to which don't forget that this, as they say, that is the updated 16 pin 12V HPWR connector. This is the one that has the shorter sense pin, so you have to plug it in more to, you know, make sure it doesn't melt your connector. All of that aside, basically, they're including two of them. And when they asked why, according to this, MSI's reason for adding it is to support the next generation of graphics cards, which makes for an unbelievable potential power draw of 1200 watts for the GPU alone. Of course, I said potential power draw just because it doesn't technically have to do that, but basically it almost likely guarantees that the upcoming RTX 5090 could potentially pull more than 600 watts. Now, they do state, as I believe I'd also gone over this at one point, that certain sources are claiming that the 5090 can draw up to 600 watts. Basically, if you're looking at purchasing a next generation GPU, there's a somewhat decent chance you're gonna need a new PSU. But first, there's a new site I recently discovered that solves the number one issue when learning to code. Boredom. It's called Boot.dev, and they sponsored today's video because the founders are gamers just like me and many of you. Now, you might be wondering why that matters, and that's because Boot.dev is basically an RPG for programming. I'm talking they have achievements, quests, XP, and all that good stuff to make learning and mastering back in development fun. I mean, they even have leaderboards if you want to take it up a notch. Plus, this is for everyone, because Boot.dev can take you from start to finish in both Python and Go language. And given the average backend developer made over $100,000 in 2023, there's no reason not to do it. Especially because they offer a no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee, as well as a free demo on every course. And if that's not enough, when you click my link in the description and use code GAMERMELD in all caps, you'll get 25% off your first month or even entire year if you choose the annual plan. So check that out today. And next up for today, Intel's Lunar Lake reviews are in. And for those who may not remember, Lunar Lake is said to be one of Intel's biggest releases in quite a long time. This is their ultra low power chip that is actually set to prove that x86 can beat ARM when it comes to power draw. And while they somewhat did it, I would argue it's not as impressive as a lot of people are making out. With that said, don't get me wrong, it is very impressive, but let's just get right to it. Starting things off, these benchmarks are coming from a review from Hardware Canucks. That was really the best one that I could find. A lot of the reviews are not very thorough at all. They don't have a lot of benchmarks. They probably didn't have a lot of time before releasing these reviews. Either way, let's get right to it. And starting things off, we're going to get right to battery life and really quickly i do want to note that while we're looking at these as you can see they tried to get the actual battery size of each one to be as close as they could but for example the macbook air 13 only has a 53 watt hour battery which is significantly smaller than all of the others so keep that in mind Though, right off the bat, you'll notice that the Apple M3, even with their smaller battery, beat out everyone. But you will notice that the Ultra 7 258V from Intel actually does beat out the Qualcomm chip. So definitely not bad at all. Yes, it doesn't beat Apple, but as usual there, that's likely because 
Apple has full control of both the software and hardware, and that definitely seems to help them out. Moving on, we have a YouTube load, so we're doing a constant 4K video playback, and here, the Ultra 7 actually beats out the Apple M3. Though, I do want to point out that 53 watt hour battery versus the 72 watt hour, obviously the Apple M3 would have still won if it had the same 72 watt hour battery. Still very impressive here, and as you can see, once again, it beats out Qualcomm's chip. Moving on, things get a little different. As you can see here, under heavy load, most of these ultimately end up getting very close. Oh, and really quickly, I do want to point out in these lower light load tests, you can see that the Ryzen AI 9 does worse in both of these than all of the tested chips. Though, when we move to a heavier load, it does end up doing better, though at the same time, it also has a 78 watt hour battery, which is more than all of the other chips. And here, Apple's M3 seriously does get impressive. It completely beats all of them, though you'll likely find out that it's because Apple isn't pushing their chip as much as the others, sort of. Either way, moving on, when we move to the Cinebench single core test, Intel's Ultra 7 258V actually beats out Ambi's new Ryzen AI 9 365, though it does lose to the Apple M3. When we move to multi-core, as you can see here, well, first off, very impressive by Qualcomm, theirs actually beats out all of the other chips, though this is the newest Cinebench 2024. When we move to Cinebench R23, you'll see that AMD's ends up taking the lead and by quite a large margin. With that said, even in Cinebench 2024, you can see that the Ryzen AI 9 365 completely crushes Intel's new Ultra 7 258V, and then moving over to Blender, we see the exact same thing yet again with the Ryzen AI 9 365 completely coming out on top. And lastly, when it comes to gaming, I will definitely say that Intel's new integrated GPU based on Battlemage is definitely very impressive, but unfortunately, they're only comparing it to the Radeon 880M and not the 890M, though I will say that Intel does have a higher end CPU that gives the integrated GPU a little bit more TDP leeway, so maybe they should have compared it to the 880M, but regardless as you can see right here intel's new cpu definitely does beat it out though when it comes to actual real world benchmarks they seem to somewhat trade places though most of them did have intel taking the lead either way you can see right here counter strike 2 they're pretty much neck and neck though the 1% lows here do obviously look better than the 880M, but then when we move over to Baldur's Gate 3, you can see that, well, basically, they're neck and neck yet again. Ultimately, I'll definitely say that Intel did a really good job with these chips. Their integrated GPU is very impressive, as well as the battery life that you're going to get out of these. But if you want the absolute fastest CPU performance, you're still going to want to stick with AMD. And next up, while talking about AMD's CPUs and how great they are, I actually missed this story, but I'm also going to have an update to it. But a little while back, we actually got confirmation that AMD is working on a new update to their Z1 Extreme chip, being the Z2 Extreme for handhelds. As you can see right down here, they actually confirm it through a Q&A session with AMD and Microsoft. And you can see right here that AMD revealed that it's targeting an early 2025 release for the Z2 Extreme. And as you can see down here, they're talking about higher performance and better battery life, to which AMD ultimately says AMD's Jack Hoon highlighted wanting to play Black Myth Wukong for three hours on a handheld, not the 45 minutes or so you can get on current handhelds. Now, I will say that I highly doubt it's gonna go from 45 minutes to three hours, but of course, every little bit counts. And this brings us to today's story. This is a shipping manifest, and we actually now get a first look at that upcoming CPU. You can see it's the Z2X, Z2 Extreme 28 watt, and this confirms that it comes with eight cores. Now, obviously the original Z1 Extreme came with eight cores, so it's not all that impressive, but don't forget that we're talking more battery life. And of course, that's definitely welcomed when it comes to handheld gaming consoles. 
And lastly for today, we're finally starting to get some new information on AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 X3D chips. This story originally comes from a new forum post from a known leaker on the Chippo forums, but he actually got it from a new Gigabyte X870 event. As you can see right here, it says, this time the 9950X3D and 9900X3D will have some new features, so they won't be released alongside the 9800X3D. I'm guessing they'll be available early next year. Now, this is sort of good news and sort of bad news. It's bad news because we're talking next year for that, but it's good news because we're talking new features, which I'll get to in just a second. But it's sort of also good news, well, not that part, but it's just those two CPUs that are coming next year because also according to him, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D is expected to launch by the end of October, meaning this bad boy is just one month away. Now, they did state this is from someone else, but apparently, according to once again another well-known leaker, he claims that the 9800X3D cannot be overclocked. Of course, there were earlier rumors claiming that the 9000X3D chips could, but this is when they're talking those new features. I wonder if AMD's making the 9950X3D and 9900X3D chips have the ability to overclock so you have more of an incentive to get them over the 9800X3D. Regardless, we likely won't have to wait long to find out and let's just say that I'm definitely pumped for this one. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000X3D chips? And what do you think about those new Lunar Lake chips? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to learn back-end coding with boot.dev down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.